In this video we'll talk about more Grand Prix assignment changes, Stage 3 of the JGP, the Riga Cup, St. Petersburg's test skates and the new programs that were revealed, Aliona Kostornea's surgery updates and much more. If you are interested in that or any particular topics, links and timestamps will be included in the description box below. Let's see what's new and what we have to look forward to. First, I'd like to start with news about the upcoming Senior Grand Prix because right after posting my latest video we've had even more updates. Recently it was announced that Ekaterina Ryabova had withdrawn from Skate Canada and now we finally understand why. Ekaterina Ryabova announced that she has completed the competitive part of her sporting career and will now be moving on to coaching as well as becoming a choreographer. It's been amazing to see her achieve her dream of competing at the Olympics and we now wish her all the best in this next phase of her career. Alongside this announcement, this will mean there's a new free spot open at the NHK Trophy and it is currently unknown who will fill this spot. A skater who was set to fill one of these spots following the multiple withdrawals from Skate Canada was Nina Pinzerone, she herself has unfortunately had to withdraw from both of her Grand Prix assignments due to injury. It is unknown who will take her spots at Skate Canada and the MK John Wilson Trophy. We wish Nina a speedy recovery. This must be so hard for her. Finally, it was revealed who will take Vladimir Livintsev's place at the MK John Wilson Trophy. This spot will now be filled by Team USA's Tomoki Hiwatashi. There are still so many open Grand Prix assignments, so I will continue to keep you posted when any further changes happen. Continuing on with a shocking story. Respected multiple-time champion Carolina Kostner posted that she is injured with a double jaw fracture that happened while she was working. This was very shocking to hear and we wish her a successful and speedy recovery. Get well soon Carolina. Moving on with some lighter stories there were lots of enjoyable performances at Stage 3 of the Junior Grand Prix this week at the Riga Cup. Like always let's start with the women's event. This event began on a bit of a shaky note with some technical and sound issues that were fortunately fixed for the most part. Inga Gurjanids made her Junior Grand Prix debut at this event representing Georgia. Inga Gurjanids originally represented Russia and had great success in domestic events with her triple axel, so there's been both intrigue and excitement surrounding the potential of her career. She skated her short program to Sweet Dreams, which can be an overused piece of music in skating, but this mix she skated to felt refreshing. With Inga performing and hitting each beat of the music really well. She received positive G.O.E. for the majority of her elements apart from A.Q. on her combination and missing out on key elements in her step sequence. Her spins were strong and a standout, each receiving level 4s. Inga went into 5th after the short program with a total score of 58.80 points and you can tell she was a little bit disappointed by this. Inga continued to perform at a high level with a very uniquely dark free skate. The composition and choreography were well thought out and she nailed almost every detail. It's great to see a skater skate in a different style. We didn't get to see her triple axel here, but what elements she attempted, you could see her determination on every one of them. The only thing she made mistakes on were her first two combinations. Inga earned 121.48 points for her free skate and she finished 4th overall, with a total score of 180.28 points. Ami Nakai of Japan made her Junior Grand Prix debut here too. She began her competition showing off some great skills, with a very joyful and expressive performance to I Got Rhythm by George Gershwin for her short program. Ami had a clean skate apart from a level 2 on her step sequence that was a little wobbly at times and she missed out on level 4 for her opening spin. But in time I think that will be easy to clean up given her skill level. What impressed me the most in this program was the height and rotation she gets in her jumps. She finished the short in 3rd place with a score of 63.87 points. Ami's free skate wasn't clean but still very solid. She attempted an ambitious triple axel which she landed, but unfortunately it was under-rotated this time. She has landed it successfully in the past and hopefully with her jumping technique this will become a consistent jump for her. Ami's skating is very smooth all round and she carries great speed. Even the jumps she popped, she made them look smooth. 
I think one of the reasons why she makes little mistakes is her eagerness and can often mean that she rushes her entrances into the elements. Like her short program, she performed beautifully and it was just as enjoyable. She finished the free skate with a total of 121.75 points and a total competition score of 185.62 points. Earning her a bronze medal. Promising Team USA talent Soho Lee also made her debut at this event. Soho Lee has been in good form in the run-up to this event, winning a couple of domestic competitions. Soho skated a beautiful short program. She has such a wonderful classical quality and delicateness to her skating. She skated clean the only faults in the program where she missed out on a couple of levels in her step sequence and final layback spin. She went into the free in second place with a score of 64.06 points. Her free skate was just as delightful as her short program with excellent packaging and choreography from Misha Gay. She was clean for the most part but she had to think on her feet after a shaky landing on her second lutz, luckily she managed to eke out an improvised combination later on in the program. Soho did herself proud for her Junior Grand Prix debut. She received a score of 121.86 for her free skate and a total competition score of 185.92 points, earning a silver medal. One of South Korea's brightest stars and junior world silver medalist Jia Shin made her return to the Junior Grand Prix. She opened her Grand Prix campaign with a flawless short program. Receiving high grades of execution of each element and level 4s all round which she was the only skater to do so that day. The giving is such a perfect choice for her and she performed each little detail beautifully. She just floats across the ice and makes everything look effortless. Jia went into the lead with a total score of 70.41 points, which is a personal best for her. Her free skate didn't go exactly to plan at times but was still enjoyable to watch. She fell on her triple lutz and doubled out of her toe loop on the following combination. She was a little bit frustrated by this in interviews afterwards, given what a perfectionist she is. Which is such a great trait to have in this sport. Mistakes aside, her skating skills really shine through. She has one of the best laybacks in the sport at the moment and it matched with this music makes it a wonderful moment in the program. She received level 4s all round again and solid G O D marks. She finished the free with a total score of 124.27 points and a competition score of 194.68 points. Winning gold by almost 9 points. Well done Jia Xin. It's hard to believe we're almost halfway through the Junior Grand Prix. Here are the current women's standings after the first three events. Remember, only the top six will qualify for the Grand Prix Final. Who do you think will go to the Grand Prix Final? Comment below. Continuing on to the men's event. Rocket Brawlin is a skater with lots of potential out of Kazakhstan. He has such great qualities such as his speed, his flow, and overall solid skating skills in general. He looks very comfortable on the ice. There's still lots of areas to improve on, but I think a lot of that comes from him holding back a bit and some hesitation, but he has a great foundation to build off of. He has great personality and I wish he showed a bit more of that into his programs, his free skate felt empty in places. Kazakhstan has had many brilliant skaters over the years and it's great to see them rebuilding. They have a great potential talent in Rocket Brawlin. He finished the competition in third place with a score of 199.38 points. Japanese skater Ryo Nakata is really talented and a great performer. Like most skaters in Japan, he has a great base level of skating ability. Yes, it's a bit messy right now, but you got to see glimpses of potential for where he could go in the future. He definitely has something. One of the qualities that stood out for me was how he's determined to fight for every landing and that he doesn't panic when things don't exactly go to plan. Those are great traits to have, especially at this stage in his career. He finished the event in second place with a total score of 200.17 points. But it was experienced Nikolai Memela of Italy who took home gold from this event. He skated at the previous stage of the Grand Prix taking home silver, but he just looked more confident and composed here. In the short program particularly, he you couldn't really fault him. 
He did such a good job. He's definitely somebody to keep an eye on. He finished the event with a total score of 225.76 points, which is a new personal best for him. Congratulations Nikolai! Here are the current men's standings after the first three events. Nikolai Memela is out in the lead after completing his two events. The question is can, or will anyone catch him? We will soon find out in the upcoming events. Moving on to pairs Smith and Deng continue America's winning streak in the discipline with taking home gold by over 12 points. With the two Canadian pairs rounding out the podium. In ice dance German team, Daria Grimm and Mikhail Savitsky won their first junior Grand Prix gold medal. Which was the first at this level in 10 years for Germany. Congratulations to both of them. We're at the stage in the Grand Prix where it's going to get very interesting. The next stop on the Grand Prix is the Armenian Cup. Moving on to news out of Team Russia. The annual St. Petersburg test skates were held. This event was not the main test skates but an event for skaters who train in St. Petersburg to have a run out and showcase their new programs for the year. It was nice to see Sofia Semodorova making her coaching debut here. I think she will make an amazing coach. Good luck on your new journey Sofia. Elizaveta Tuktamashiva attended this event beginning her 16th figure skating season. That is so impressive and she just seems to continue getting even better with age. She revealed that she will be skating to a mix of feeling good for her short program. Elizaveta took it easy here, not showcasing any triple axles here in her layouts. Which is understandable, it's only test skates. But she looks to be in good form. One thing I noticed was she's very smooth going into spins now, she just floats into them. Overall, I thought the program was good and I can't wait to see it in competition when she will give it her all. For her free skate she will be skating to Loneliness, which is a slower piece of music from her usual bold impactful free skates. Even though this choice is different for her, I think if she nails at this program, this could be really special. It will be interesting to see if she attempts her quads in competition. Her teammate Mikhail Kaliata also attended this event. He skated to his Nutcracker short program that he's keeping from last season and we finally got to see his tango in a madhouse free skate in full. We've gotten to see snippets of it before with Kaliata working with Ilya Overbook. It's turned out even better than I imagined and this is the perfect style for Kaliata. He seems to be very relaxed this season. Mikhar Ignatov will be skating to So Far From Home for his short program and the Great Gatsby soundtrack for his free skate. Peter Gimenik is skating to Eternal Eclipse Dawn of Faith for his short and for his free he is skating to Concierto de Aranjuez by Joaquin Rodrigo. Andre Mozilev will be skating to I Can't Quit You Baby by Led Zeppelin and Kerber by Jan Tiersen for his free skate. Dmitry Aliyev looks to be in really good form which is very nice to see. He unveiled his new short program I Will Always Love You by Chase Hallfelder. He didn't participate in the free skate as a precaution because he felt something was off after the short. Which is very understandable with the main test skates not too long away, it's not worth risking anything. I hope the form he showed here continues because he's so talented. Yasmina Kadirova and Valerie Kolsov's free skate is, Who Wants to Live Forever, by Queen. Anastasia Mishina and Alexander Galiamov had a strong performance here, showcasing their new waltz number no. 2 by Shostakovich short program. Their lifts in particular are looking really good. I can't wait to see this program in competition. I think it really suits them. It was planned that they wouldn't participate in the free skate and their teammates Alexander Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky did not attend this event at all. But we will get to see them at the main test skates from the 24th to the 25th of this month. Aside from these test skates, we've gotten more new program announcements. Sofia Samadelkina announced her new short program Can't Help Falling in Love by Diana Ankadina. And Veronica Zilina showcased a new Swan Lake short program at a competition in Moscow. It's been reported that Maya Kromik was admitted to hospital after injuring her hand. There's been some conflicting reports but seemingly she sliced the tendons in her fingers during training. This is very saddening to hear and Maya will unfortunately miss out on test skates. 
we wish her well and a speedy recovery. Finally, to close off this video, we've got an update about Aliona Costornea. It took some time, but she has successfully had her hip surgery. Now she has a long recovery ahead of her. The next three weeks will be about rehabilitation for her and the full recovery time can take up to six months. We hope everything continues to go smoothly for Aliona from here on out and we wish her a speedy and successful recovery. She's set to take part in a Dracula-themed ice show in October. Which is perfect for her. We wish her all the best. Wow, that was a lot to go through, but it's all very exciting. I tried to cover as much as I could as I usually do. Sorry for this being a little late because of that. I hope you enjoyed this recap of everything that has happened recently. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please, comment below. What did you enjoy most from these events? We have so much to look forward to now. Thanks for watching.